Hi, this is Jacob Avila of 5-Minute Sono, and today I'm going to show you how to do an ultrasound guided IV. Your probe of choice for this examination is going to be the linear probe. Anytime you're doing any kind of procedure with a needle, the linear probe is going to be your probe of choice. There are many veins to choose from in the arm. You can start in the forearm, but what I found is that usually when they're calling me to put in an ultrasound guided IV, the forearm veins are all but spent. So I usually focus in on the upper arm. There are three veins you can use, the cephalic, the basilic, and the brachial veins, and I usually focus in on the medial upper arm with an emphasis on the basilic and brachial veins. When I'm evaluating a patient to see if their brachial veins are usable, this is where I'll put the probe, and I usually put it in cross-section as you see here. And This is the ultrasound image that you'll see. There's a brachial artery surrounded, usually surrounded by two brachial veins and a nerve right next to it. It's important to identify all three of those structures because sometimes the nerve is right above the vein and uh, sometimes the artery is besides the vein like you see here. Usually you're going to have the vein on either side of the artery. This one's a little bit different. If you're not sure exactly which one's which, just go ahead and compress it. The compressible ones are going to be the vein and the non-compressible pulsatile ones going to be the artery. The basilic vein is actually the vein that I like using the most. The reason for this is there's no dangerous surrounding structures, no artery, no nerve around it, and I'm going to show you how to get to it. So here you see the brachial veins, arteries, and nerve there, and I'm rotating it medially, and you can see that there's a vein right there, easily compressible, and there's really no other important structures around it. Next, you're going to want to make sure that you have all your supplies ready to go. Probably the most important piece of equipment that you have is a special catheter. This is not your standard IV catheter. You're going to need one that's a little bit longer. The ones that we have at our shop are a 2.5 inch 18 gauge IV. These ones work great. This is the ones that I would recommend using. Next, you're going to want to get a sterile tegaderm to put over the probe cover. It just keeps things a little bit cleaner. This is a semi-sterile technique, but I like to be as sterile as possible with this. Then get the gel. I don't like using the ultrasound jelly bottle from the machines. I get these ultrasound jelly packets. I think it's a little bit cleaner. And then get your flush and your regular IV star kit. When you're putting the tegaderm on the probe itself, you don't need to put any jelly in between the tegaderm and the probe. You just need to make sure there's no bubbles and no bumps or anything like that on it. And then just take off the ends and you'll be good to go. There are three things that you have to keep in mind when doing this. And it's axis, tip, and angle. Here, this is a bird's eye view, I'm looking from top to bottom. On the top of the screen here, I'm at a non-parallel orientation. I'm not at zero degrees with the vein, and when I try to advance the catheter, I can't, or in real life, you'd probably go through the vein. On the bottom part of the screen here, you can see that when I go into the needle, I'm going at a zero degrees, I'm completely parallel, so sliding the catheter in is much easier. How do you know if you're on axis or not? Here's a picture of a patient's arm, there's the vein, and as I move up and down the patient's arm, the vein moves back and forth across the screen. The reason for this is my ultrasound transducer is not in the same axis as the vein. Here's an image of what it would look like if you were on axis. So I'm moving up and down the patient's arm here, and you can see that the vein stays right in the middle of the screen, and that's where you want it. This way, as you perform your venipuncture, as long as you're going at a 90 degree angle to the ultrasound transducer, you're n you know that you're in the right axis. The second thing you need to keep in mind is to never lose a tip of the needle. The ultrasound transducer is just a one millimeter slice of whatever it is that you have it focused on. So as you advance the needle, if you don't move your ultrasound transducer, it's going to think that there's a point right there in the middle of the vein and it's not going to understand that it's only the shaft and not the tip of the needle. What you need to be doing instead is to make sure that you follow, move the transducer and follow the needle tip so that you always know where that tip is. Here's a good example of what not to do. In this example, I'm not moving my ultrasound transducer, I'm just keeping it steady, and the ultrasound beam only sees this little point here, and that's all it's able to see. So I'm advancing the needle, but all I'm seeing is this point up here, and I don't know where my needle tip actually is. In this example, I'm moving my ultrasound transducer with the needle tip, always making sure that I keep it in my field of view until I get into the vessel and then aspirate. Lastly, you're going to want to make sure that you have a good angle before you advance the catheter. Oftentimes these veins are going to be a little bit deeper, so you're going to have to go at a sharper angle. And if you don't flatten relative to the skin before you advance the catheter, you might not be able to get it in, or worse, you'll go through the vein and blow that vein. So in this example, I'm still at a sharp angle, get in the vein, and before I advance the catheter, I flatten it relative to the patient and then advance it.
Here's a video of me actually performing the procedure. Identify the vein and move it up and down the patient's arm to make sure that I'm in the right axis. If I know I'm in the right axis, that vein stays in the middle of my screen as I move up and down. I know that if I put my needle in at a 90 degree angle to the transducer, I will be in axis. So once I get underneath the skin, I make sure to move my transducer back and forth, always making sure that I know where that needle tip is until I get into the vein right there. Put my ultrasound transducer down and flatten the catheter before I advance it in order to make sure that I stay in the vessel. To recap, make sure you have the appropriate gear, including your 2.5 inch catheter. Make sure you keep in mind the axis, the angle, never lose sight of the tip, and make sure you secure the line well. I'm pretty aggressive with the way that I tape these because once I put them in, I really don't want to have to go back and do it again. I apologize for making this a little bit longer. I have actually left out a good amount of stuff, so if you have any questions or concerns or clarifications you need, you can always contact me on Twitter or email me, and there's some great FOMED resources out there that you can look through as well.